This month, Marzon took a major step with the announcement of the final 100 candidates in its astronaut selection process. From these 100, just 24 will be chosen to go into full-time training at the end of 2015. Now, if you were interested to apply and didn't get the chance, don't worry, because a new selection process will start shortly afterwards. This will be to train people for future missions to Mars, and even to replace any crews that drop out for whatever reason. But I do have to say, the media attention following this incredible announcement has been absolutely insane. I've been doing interviews pretty much full time, but finally, thankfully, the attention from mainstream media is starting to die down a bit now, and things are starting to return to some semblance of normality. So what comes next? Well, the rest of the selection process will be taking place in the second half of 2015, as it's going to be filmed for a documentary TV series, and it's in part the logistics of organising this, which means that we can't do it until after the summer. So what will be taking place? Well, the 100 remaining candidates for the third round will get together in a single location for a two-week residential. During this residential, the candidates will organise themselves into international teams of between 10 and 15 people based on personality compatibility scores, and each team will then undergo group challenges to demonstrate their suitability for the mission. Immediately after this residential is finished, for the fourth and final round of the selection process, the remaining candidates will go into a simulation mission, effectively a replica of the Mars base here on Earth, and that will be used to select the final 24 that will go into astronaut training. And if you're interested in further details about what's coming next in the selection process, I recently hosted a Q&A video with Dr Norbert Kraft, in which he gave us many very informative details, and you can check that out just over here. In fact, Dr Kraft has kindly offered to take part in a new discussion, this Friday, February 27th, on the topic of survival on Mars. During this, we'll be discussing the MIT study, which is frequently mentioned in the media, the rationale behind crew composition, how the TV series will link into the astronaut training, and finally the role that isolation chambers will play in crew selection, training, and even about Dr Kraft's own personal experience after having taken part in various isolation chamber experiments. And of course, if you still have some questions for him, by all means post them down in the comments below. Now, with increased attention comes increased scrutiny, so now more than ever it's vital that Mars One establishes its credibility, and nothing more so is important than proving itself financially that it can actually afford to do this mission. So some of you might recall that in a previous mission update, I mentioned that Mars One was in negotiations with a UK-based investment fund to finance the 2018 demonstration mission. I caught up with Mars One CEO Baz Lansdorp in London last week to ask him about how things were going with regards to the finances, and he told me that negotiations have now actually finished, they have successfully concluded, and Mars One is now just signing the various paperwork required for this deal. And in fact, its scope is much larger than previously expected, covering the full $6 billion required to lead all the way up to the first human landing in 2025. Now, of course, this wouldn't be released all in one go. It will be done on a milestone-by-milestone milestone basis. For example, um, initially, a payment to go to Lockheed Martin to finance the construction of the 2018 mission. And upon the 2018 mission's success, then you will then get funding for the 2020 mission, and so on and so forth. But this is fantastic news, as it frees Mars One from relying on media broadcasting rights in order to finance the precursor missions. Instead, any media revenue would be used to finance future human missions, after, say, the first human landing where most of the revenue is expected to come into place. On the technical front, Lockheed Martin and SSTL have now concluded their preliminary design studies on the 2018 lander and communications satellite, and Mars One is now reviewing the results before initiating the next phase in these projects. But it's important to note that time is quite tight at the moment, and Mars One only has until the summer to initiate the next phase with Lockheed Martin, or else risk missing the 2018 launch window. Now, things are looking quite good with regards to meeting the deadline at the moment, but I'll of course keep you posted um, with any latest developments in that sector. And also, finally, I can confirm that Paragon is still on track to release into the public domain its conceptual design study for how Mars One's life support systems will work towards the end of March time. And this is important because it will directly address the concerns raised by the MIT report and demonstrate how Mars One's life support will work in practice. Thanks for watching, and welcome to all the new people who subscribed over the last few weeks. I was blown away by how quickly the 1000 mark was reached. This week's featured video is a reconstruction of the Mars One mission in Kerbal Space Program by Cody Reader, one of my fellow Round 3 astronaut candidates. 
Now, if you'd like to play a small part in supporting the mission, I've got some merchandise down there in the bottom right, all proceeds of which will go towards Mars One. And tell you what, in fact, I'll give a free t-shirt to the first person to correctly identify the region of Mars in the following riddle. Late in time, I am the third, encroaching the escarpment, geologically stirred. Lost and found, near mountains so high, below the datum is where I lie.